All right, we finished our second exercise, and now, following our course outline, we are introducing assignment one. So it's just called fantasy landscape, using at least five reference images. But if we actually look at the unit, this will be unit four that we start today. So we're going to go to unit modules because we're going to introduce to it. This is all about compositing. So first week we learned about the course. Uh, the first exercise, unit two, we learned about finding high quality references to use in raster image compositing. That was all line art that we jumbled together. Unit three, we just finished exercise two, making a custom emoji out of vector shapes. Compositing was the first digital art discipline that was in our intro slides. And it's collage. It's using the computer to collage from other people's pixels. Doesn't have to just be black line art, which we got introduced to with. It can be everything. All the millions of colors of pixels. You can layer them together. And it can be pixels of your own, from your own camera, right? I'm going to try to incorporate some of my own photos into what I composite this semester. You don't have to do that, but you are not limited to only using other people's pixels. You can also use your own pixels. But we are not digitally painting. We're not drawing. We're taking from sources and then compositing it into an original vision. So unit four is all about doing this and getting introduced to what's called concept design. Being a concept artist is a lot of fun professionally in the digital arts because you get to design either characters or backgrounds or weapons, right? or special effects, like the way things will explode in this new anime show that's different than explosions have ever been done before, or the way the, the new Rainbow Bright cartoon will transform and have sparkle effects. So these are all things that concept artists will do as still images, and they use these concept art pieces to approve and finance new projects. So whether it's an animated show, whether it's a video game, whether it's a live action, sci-fi movie, they'll use concept designs of vehicles, of settings, of characters, of costumes to pitch it before the studio will accept it or reject it. Like the new Dune movies. The new Dune movies got approved uh, based largely on the strength of their concept art. Right? And if you've seen the new Dune movies, I've seen all the Dune movies, uh, what was especially important to that concept art was the setting. Like, how do you get the setting across of these different worlds, right? With their vastly different senses of scale and elements. So we are doing our first compositing project in concept design, not to design a character, not to design a weapon, not to design a vehicle, but to design an environment, a setting. And so to do that, we are doing what are called background plates. Think of it as a backdrop for a play, right? And sometimes concept art like this gets used that way. Sometimes stuff I've created have, has been used. A composite of like Christmas trees all lit up on like a snowy North Pole that gets projected onto the, the background of a play. And then you have like the holiday dance number in front of it. Now, what would really make that not work is if I have like an elf in the background just hanging out, right? Because that elf will be frozen in the same pose while everyone is moving in front of it, all the dancers. And that kind of takes you out of the illusion of it being an environment. So we do a clean background plate, which means it has weather. It has uh, plant life, if you want it. It has bodies of water. It might have buildings. It might have man-made structures, but what doesn't have or what's called figurative elements. Won't have people, won't have animals, won't have flames that you would expect to be moving, right? You might have the glow of something on fire in the far distance, but you're not going to have like a campfire because then those flames are going to look oddly still. Because later we'll be adding character designs to this and then having the option to animate it. And you don't want to have to animate tons of things in your background in addition to all the things on your character. So for water features, lakes are great, right? Oceans, whatever you want, puddles, <laughs> but waterfalls, not for a clean background plate. 
because a, a frozen waterfall that doesn't move, if it's frozen, that's cool. But if it's actually just a still image of a waterfall, it takes you out of the illusion of what we're going to use these backgrounds for. Does that kind of make sense? All right, so we're doing clean backgrounds. So you can do vehicles, but they should be kind of vehicles that aren't meant to be moving. Like maybe broken down vehicles, right? That kind of thing. And it is harder to do composites with man-made objects, with buildings, with bridges, with vehicles, because they have perpendicular lines and they have to fit into perspective, which just makes them a little bit trickier. It's not impossible to do, it's just a little bit trickier. Uh, which is a really good reason to do screen grabs from video games for it, because then you can set the the eye level and the angle on things to match a single viewer perspective, compositing together. Question, Seth. Yeah. If I do a screen grab of video games, I can do a triangle. Yeah. That you want to composite with elements of. Right. Sure. Uh, you need to have. No. Well, no, because doing a screen grab from a video game is just the same as getting a high-resolution picture off of someone's website. Neither of them belong to us. We have to learn how to transform them. It's not plagiarizing because we're transforming it into our own vision. It's the equivalent in like a creative writing class of doing what's called found poetry, where you find lines from a lot of different books and then use those lines to make an original poem. But just like found poetry, doesn't work to take like a full Robert Frost poem and then change two words, right. right? That doesn't make it your own poem. Just like this, it doesn't make it to take one image you find, whether it's a screen grab or something else, and then just put like lots of different trees on it. That's still just mainly an image that you found. So we're going to learn how to sketch for the vision of what we want and then populate that sketch with composites from found sources but they're based on our sketch idea and they don't rely on any single image we found online. So you need your sketch and picture. Yeah, and for, for assignment one, you'll need your sketch and your picture. So before we get there, I ask you to do question of the day one. So this is of just four questions of the day we have for the semester. If you want to skip right to it and not do it through the unit module, you can see them on the homepage right underneath our groups. And so our first one, question of the day one, you want to put something in there by 11.59 tonight so that you get started on this. What are the advantages and disadvantages of digital raster art? So this is pixel-based images, these kind of images that we're going to be compositing over traditional art. So here I have a fantasy landscape. Even though it's got a figurative element in the bark of the tree, it's still a fantasy landscape. And then we, and it's all done digitally. And then we have a similar landscape composition done with ink on rice paper of a tree with a foreground, middle ground, background. They're both fairly atmospheric, foreground, middle ground, background. But the objects themselves are very different, right? The digital file is all just ones and zeros saved, and then it can be printed or not. And then this is actually a piece of rice paper with no resolution to it except for the molecular structure of the paper and the ink embedded in the paper. And yet they're going for the same kind of aesthetic end. So I want you to think about this and write down your thoughts, and then we're going to discuss it in a future class. And all you do is you hit reply, and then you add your thoughts, and you answer as best you can. Try to answer all parts of the question, and if you write over 100 words on topic, you get credit for it. And then you're ready for our class discussion. You're ready for the questions you have to help us understand. And if you want to read what other people write to help kind of jog your thinking about it and what you can add, that's why it's done as an open discussion. Question? The uh, trees, leaves, are mm -hmm. that digital? Yeah. Uh, were those placed one by one, same as the grass, or was it just something they, they were able to mass produce? And then they... Yeah, so if the tree is from one source, the the middle ground hill is from one source, the foreground grass is from one source, this tree is from another source, the face on the tree is another source, and then these leaves are actually uh, composited, what's called internal compositing, from another part of this same tree reference, but then moved over to this part. Does that make sense? So they look a little off, 
because they're a little copy pasty and a little at awkward angles. And then, of course, the escalator is a different reference. The house is a different reference. This tree is a totally different reference. The sky is a different reference. All that kind of thing. And you can kind of see the seams. This isn't the most, like, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was just wondering if, like, each... But you don't composite each okay. leaf. I mean, there are some artists that go to that level, but that's not, not what we're hoping for. Okay. Your assignment, which this could be an example of, right, is combining five or more elements. Right. Not a thousand or more. Well, that's what I was asking, because it would also, to make, to make my, my room run, I would yeah. have to know, you know, did they have to do it individually, or how hard was it? No, yeah, so it, it just depends on kind of the reference and how much you'll have to work with it. And we're going to be doing all of that and demoing it. So, to do your concept landscape, the requirement is that it's from at least five different sources, and that your finished product is an original transformed concept, right? It's not like, oh, that's that one scene from the live action M. Night Shyamalan Avatar movie with like new rocks added. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to be learning the skills that way. So what you're going to do is first kind of think of what your setting should be. Now, when you do a setting, you need a time, right? You think of the time of day. And then you need a type of environment. So is it cold? Is it hot? Uh, is it misty? Is it jungle? And then the time of day. And then you start to get ideas of what you might want to do. And then it's fantasy. So maybe it's like a jungle, but instead of green leaves, everything's made of bubble gum. Or, you know. And you can create your own physics. But it has to be believable to its own rules. So if you have floating islands... You don't just have one floating island, right? Like that's part of this horizon in this landscape. So you're going to want to replicate that in a few places. And maybe there's like a little like floating rock in the foreground or something. So this is a concept based on the desert. And the first thing we're going to do that you're going to have by the beginning of next class on Wednesday is sketches. I'm going to try to help you sketch today. So you know how to approach it. But you can think about your concept. This one's all based on frozen, you know, glaciers and wastelands. And you can see that both of these did both a vertical sketch and a horizontal sketch for the same idea. Largely using the same kind of components. As long as you're using more than five. This one was inspired by an animation background. This one's inspired by these different references. And we're going to learn how to find really good quality reference beginning of next class. Or you can look ahead at videos for assignment one and, and know how to do it. We use something called Pixabay, which is all copyright free, you know, Creative Commons open, high quality photo reference. This one's all based on urban settings. I showed you the printout of it uh, from video game stills and then with a lot of other things added. And then this one I thought was clever because it seems pretty simple. It's just a desert in the foreground, these big cacti. A hillside in the middle ground, and then a setting sun and clouds in the background. But they wanted to give it a sense of scale, kind of like the way Dune does. And so they put these massive sculptures in. And sculptures, of course, they look like figurative elements, but we don't expect them to be moving. And I always think of like the big sculptures in the Lord of the Rings movies that are carved out of the cliffside, right? They give this sense of scale to the environment, where otherwise it might just look like a hill. But because it has this massive sculpture, and then you have a, a figure that's animated on top of it, or filmed on top of it, it shows it, it makes the space more activated. And it can be complete fantasy. So you can really play with textures, colors, different amounts of things in the sky, all that. It can be underwater. It can be out in outer space. It can be all in gaseous clouds. But the one thing we're going to try to do is always have a foreground, middle ground, and background. So that we have activated depth for when we put creatures into it, it feels more alive than if it's just a shot of sky and sea, right? Because then there's really no way you can activate that space. So that's going to have to do with our sketches. So if we go right to where the assignment description, it's helpful to read through, you know, what the requirements are. 
and what the requirements are for